Hello guys, welcome to Spec TV, and today you are here with your visual tutor, Sapom. How the brain remembers everything you study, it all falls down on you, understanding how to control the brain. Because many of you don't know how to control the brain. You just, it's amazing how you, how your brain respects you. It's amazing. I tell my brain what to do and he does it. Do you know why God put it inside of me to control it? God gave me hands to control my hands. God gave me eyes to control what I see and what I don't want to see. So why is the brain different? Why should your brain be different? An Indian man, right? <laughs> okay, so your brain should not be different, right? Your brain should not be different. Your brain should be something that you can control. It should be something you tell him, do this, and he does it. Do this, and he does it. The only problem is that you don't know how to do it. Today, I will tell you something that many people have never, have never told you. It's just something that many people don't know. So come to class. You want to read and you want to remember. As a student, that's the essence of what? That is the essence of study. You study to remember, right? So when you study and you cannot remember, it means that the brain does not respect you. Does not what? Respect you. So, how can you read to remember? It's very simple. Learn to control your brain. And let me show you how to control your brain. When your brain remembers something, it's because he has studied in the long-term memory. And if you forget, it's because it is stored in the short-term memory. So, does the long-term memory exist? Yes. What is the long-term memory? The long-term memory is not a place, a house, or something. No, it is what you tell the brain and the brain obeys. If you, if you tell the brain, store this image of this flower here, and your brain remembers where this flower is in the next five, ten, six weeks, then it means the brain has stored it in the long-term memory. It means that the brain has obeyed your instruction of storing where this flower is. So therefore, what you need to do here is very simple. How do you make your brain store information in the long-term memory? You have to understand these two basic techniques. And what are these techniques? Okay, so visual aid and Nemo map. These two techniques will give you super strength in storing information in your, in your, in your brain permanently. Guarantee. Trust me, I tell you this. If you know how to use these two, you are Okay, you are good to go, guys. So, how do you, how do you store your information in this form? It's very simple. So these two techniques are what we call the encoding technique. Now, what is encoding? Before the brain stores information, there must be a, an organization. There must be. There must be a way in which you view that information. The way you view that information depends on how the brain takes it, okay? So many of us, we are what? We are visual learners. We see, we easily pick up pictures than words. So if you pick your hand out, you find that your hand out are more of words than pictures. So you have to visualize what you study. You must visualize what you study. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Okay, don't mind me. I'm just excited. I'm, I love teaching. Okay, so visualize what you study. Okay, and then when you visualize what you study, how do you now store it? If you translate or you, you read your books, but you are looking at it in a story mode, don't, don't mind the way they were. You create your own story, create your own pictures. When you are reading, don't read words. Create image. When they say a boy is walking to the river, create a picture of a boy going to the river. When they say a man is flying a plane and flew from the plane to the earth, you just imagine somebody flying and dropping to the earth. Imagine what will happen to him. That is visualization or what? Words. So this visual aid. And how, after you have visualized what you are reading, how do you now, this is called encoding. The next step is what we call storage. How do you now, how does the brain now store? How does the brain now store that information that you have visualized? You have to, for visualization, you have to apply a technique called sound aid. 
So whatever you visualize, you 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 tell someone that you teach someone. Or you can even teach yourself. You can even talk to yourself. When you talk to yourself about what you visualize, your brain that information will be what will be stored in the long term memory in the brain. That's one technique. That's one. Once you visualize something, okay, I see a boy uh, uh, going into a river and then he fell into the river and then he was he drowned, right? Okay, I now tell I can now talk to myself and say, the boy was walking, to, he boy walked to the river, fell into the river and drowned. I've talked to myself. My brain will remember why I visualized these words and then I spoke the words. Right? And then my brain would store it. Just try it. Just try it. Just pick a, a, a paragraph. Visualize it and talk to yourself about it and see if the brain will not remember. Guarantee you the brain will remember everything like magic. See, tell him the next, in the next, the next day, tell him to remember, he'll remember. Tell him in the next week, he'll remember. So this is how I pick materials, some materials, and then I read them and then I visualize them. Especially materials that I'm, like topics that I know that I'm suspecting they'll come out in exams. That's how I visualize them and I remember them perfectly. So, you know, your material will also be huge. So you cannot rely on this on, to, to cover a full material for your exams, right? You, that is where I invented this particular technique called the Nemo map. The Nemo map is a technique that once you know this technique, once you design your map, in short, your, mat, your handouts will be like, let me say 60 pages, 70, 80, 100 pages of handout can be in one to two pages with the power of Nemo map. The power of Nemo map, he will he convert all the map will convert all my long bulky handouts into one to two pages. And once it's not summary, it's not summary, it's different from summary. Okay. So once I come, I will teach you this, okay? So once I convert it in this format, then how will I now store it? I will then apply a technique called active recall. Active recall. Right? Active recall will store the information. That is my storage technique called what? Active recall. Okay? So, active recall is a what? It's a storage technique of Nemo map. While sound aid is a storage technique of visual aid. Once I do it, then the information will be stored in my long-term memory. Perfect. Guaranteed. Okay? Now, let me show you the power of visual aid. Now, look at this diagram here on the board i have a three okay number two uh number two i have a broom number three i have a pot on fire number four i have a ball number five i have a book number six i have a car and then number seven i have a house okay i want to remember this diagram the way it's arranged in order once you can do this it means you are a visual aid person you're not a dull person what you are lacking is because what you are lacking is what I call the inability to understand how the brain works in remembering everything. Okay, I will explain this furthermore in individual separate videos so that you can be able to 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 really understand how to get your A's. I'm telling you, see, if you do this perfectly, you hit four point every semester not only to those in the university if you teach your children how to apply visual aid oh my god like they will be on fire on and this name map on their notes they will be on fire thank you for being in class with sir paul the visual tutor i will see you guys next time thank you and bye bye for now